Dafyomi Tractate Bhavakama, page 105b, part 2, with the words Ubeplukta uh, Dehani Tanai. The Gemara comments and Rev Ami and Shmuel disagree with regard to the issue that is the subject of the dispute between these Tanaim, as it is taught in Brita, with regard to one who administers an oath to a single witness, and the witness takes a false oath that he has no awareness of the monetary matter at hand. The witness is exempt from bringing a sin offering. And Rabbi Lazar, son of Rabbi Shimon, deems the witness liable to bring a sin offering. The Gemara asks, with regard to what do they disagree? One sage, Rabbi Lazar, son of Rabbi Shimon, holds that an item that causes financial loss is considered to have monetary value. An item that causes financial loss is considered to have monetary value. Similarly, the potential monetary benefit that the witness can generate by causing the defendant to admit to the debt and pay the owner, is considered to have monetary value. Okay. Therefore, the witness is considered to have taken a false oath with regard to a monetary matter. And one sage, the first Tana holds, that an item that causes financial loss is not considered to have monetary value. Similarly, the potential monetary benefit that the witness can generate by causing the defendant to admit to the debt and pay the owner is not considered to have monetary value. Therefore, the witness is not considered to have taken a false oath with regard to a monetary matter. Okay. Uh, the Gemara discusses the halakha concerning a bailey who denies having a deposit in his possession. Rav Sheshet says... A bailey who falsely denies a claim concerning a deposit becomes as a robber with regard to it, and he is therefore liable to pay even for damage that is the result of accidents. The Gemara notes that the Tana also taught this halacha in a brighta. The verse states, and deals falsely with it, Leviticus 5, 22-24, and we learned from this verse, the punishment for one who denies having a deposit. From where is the prohibition itself derived? The verse states, Neither shall you deal falsely. Leviticus 19.11 The Gemara explains what? Is the Brita not referring to the punishment of having to pay money due to his denial, even for accidental damage, in accordance with the statement of Rav Sheshet? The Gemara rejects this. No. The Brita is referring to the punishment for taking a false oath. That is the additional one-fifth payment and the bringing of the offering. The Gemara challenges. From the fact that the latter clause of the Brita teaches a case where he took an oath, it may be inferred that the first clause teaches a case where he did not take an oath. And the punishment referred to by the Brita is the imposition of liability for accidental damage. Okay. As the latter clause teaches that the verse says, and swear to a lie. Leviticus 5.22. And we learned from this that there is a punishment for taking a false oath. From where is the prohibition itself derived? The verse states nor lie. Leviticus 19.11 And from the fact that the latter clause reaches, teaches the halacha where he took an oath, the first clause must be teaching the halacha in a case where he did not take an oath. The Gemara answers the sages say in response to both this clause and that clause are referring to a case where he took an oath. But here, in the latter clause, it is where the Bailey admitted 
Oh my goodness. Mordechai! That should be. Alright. We just gotta keep it. I doubt anyone will listen this long, but whatever. <laughs> okay. Um, where was I here? Um, the Gemara answers the sages say in response that both this clause and that clause are referring to a case where he took an oath, but here in the latter clause it is where the Bailey Bailey <laughs> admitted this false oath while there in the first clause is where witnesses came and testified that the deposit is in his possession. Where witnesses came, he is liable only for damage that is a result of accidents, and where he admitted his false oath, he is obligated to pay for the principal and the additional one-fifth payment, and to bring a guilt offering, since the bride is referring to, in both clauses, to a case where the bailey took an oath, it offers no support for Rav Shesh's statement. After dismissing the attempted proof for Rav Shesh's statement that a bailey who denies possession of a deposit is considered a robber even without having taken a false oath, the Gemara now attempts to disprove the statement itself. Rabbi Rahman raises an objection to Rav Shesh's statement, though it is usually the defendant who is required to take an oath in order to avoid having to pay a claim. There are cases in which the plaintiff takes an oath to receive payment. The Mishnah in Shavuot... 44b lists these cases, and one such cases where the plaintiff's opponent, that is, the, the defendant, is suspect with regard to an oath. That is, there is a reason for the court to believe that he would take a false oath. How would the defendant have become suspect? It would be by having taken a false oath with regard to either an oath of testimony or an oath of a deposit, or even for an oath taken in vain. The Gemara comments since the Mishnah states that he becomes suspect only as a result of having taken a false oath, it can be inferred that he does not become suspect by virtue of denial of a claim alone. And if it is so that a bailey who denies having been taken the deposit is considered a robber even without having taken an oath, then it is with his denial that he ought to be disqualified as a robber does not have the, the credibility to take an oath. The sages say in defense of Rav Shesh's opinion, with what are we dealing here in the case of, of the Mishnah in Shavuot? We are dealing with a case where the deposit stands in a place, not in the Bailey's possession. For example, a swamp. As in this case, his statement is not considered a complete denial because he thinks to himself, I will evade the owner by claiming that I never took the deposit until I go and bring it to him. Therefore, he is not considered to be a robber. By contrast, Roshesh is referring to a case where the Bailey denied responsibility for the item while it was in his possession as he intended to keep it for himself. The Gemara adds, No, that one who denies possession of an item only so that he may later return it is not considered a robber. As of Edi bar Avin says... One who denies a claim concerning having taken a loan is fit to bear witness.